chapter 13 one we're on vectors and i think motion and this this chapter really isn't too difficult uh really a lot of theory behind this and of course i'm not going to dive deep into the theory at all so for this chapter we're just going to do a random problem and this problem comes from uh, a midterm practice um, from 2012 and it's the following problem uh, so consider the cycloid x equals t minus sine t and y is equal to 1 minus cosine t uh, let l1 be the line tangent so that's just tangent to the cycloid at t equals pi over 2 and let l2 be the line tangent to the <coughs> oh excuse me uh, let L2 be the line tangent to the cycloid at t equals 3 pi over 2. Okay, and find the point where these two intersect. Okay, so um, a little bit of 13 one stuff mixed with some elementary calculus stuff. So what is uh, the equation of L1? Okay, so we okay, so first of all, our cycloid has this position R of T is equal to, I mean, I guess the book would write it like T minus sine T I plus one minus cosine T J. But for my sake, I'm going to write it as a vector like this. Okay. And so to find a tangent vector, then uh, I would need to find r prime of t. And so I just take each derivative of each component. So then this first one becomes 1 minus cosine t. And the second part becomes just sine t. Right? And so r prime at pi over 2 um, is going to be what? r prime at pi over 2 is going to be 1 comma 1. And then, so that's going to be a vector, 1 comma 1. And then r prime at 3 pi over 2 is going to be 1 comma negative 1. All right? Okay, so what do I need to do now? So essentially, I have the cycloid that's moving around in space. And I don't even know what it looks like. Uh, let's see if I can even give myself an idea of what this guy looks like. Uh, Okay, so it looks it looks something like uh, it looks something like this. Uh, so that's what that's what this uh, that's what this looks like. And so here's zero, here's pi, and here's two pi, and then you got one. Ugh. You got one, and then it gets to a height of two. Okay, and so. So what I want then is r at pi over 2, here's the tangent line at pi over 2, right? and then here's the tangent line at 3 pi over 2. Um, I need to find where these guys intersect. So you got to like dot that guy out, you got to extend this guy out, and they'll intersect somewhere there. So this essentially tells me the slope. right? This vector tells me the slope of my, uh, my tangent line at the point. So in order to find the point of intersection then between L1 and L2, I also need to find a point on the line, right? Because remember, lines, we need points and we need vectors. So I also then need to find R at pi over 2, right? I need to find the position at pi over 2 so that L1 then I can match up with these two guys right here. So R of pi over 2 is going to be pi over 2 minus 1. Right, and then comma, uh, what does this become? This becomes one minus zero, so one. Okay, and so, so that's that. And then uh, now I need to match r prime at three pi over two with r at three pi over two, which is then, what, what is that? That becomes 
uh, 3 pi over 2 plus 1 comma 1 okay and so now L1 is equal to right the point plus the line which is pi over 2 minus 1 comma 1 plus some parameter t times uh, or let's let, let's not call it t in this case uh, yeah let's not call it t some parameter s times 1 comma 1 and then l2 is equal to then 3 pi over 2 plus 1 comma 1 plus some parameter r times 1 negative 1 right and so now we want to find where these guys intersect so essentially what needs to happen then is okay so if i write this out this top guy really becomes s plus pi over 2 minus 1 comma s plus 1 right that's what it is if i combine the x coordinates and the y coordinates and then down here i get uh, r plus 3 pi over 2 plus 1 comma uh, 1 minus r all right and now i gotta set them equal to each other so I have s plus pi over 2 minus 1 is equal to, so that x coordinate is going to be equal to the bottom x coordinate of L2. So r plus 3 pi over 2 plus 1, right? And then I got s plus 1 is equal to 1 minus r. So how are we going to do this? Well, uh, I can subtract 1 from both sides. So I got s. So using the second equation here, this gets me s is equal to uh, negative r right if i minus one from both sides and then up here then um, if i take this s equals negative r into account then i get negative r plus pi over two minus one is equal to r plus three pi over two plus one right and that's by the virtue of uh, replacing s with negative r and then now the solving for r, let's solve for r on the right-hand side, I get, um, so now I get 2r by adding r to both sides, and then moving everything over to the left, I get negative 2 pi over 2, um, and then minus 2, okay? And then if I divide, uh, so this is then uh, negative pi minus 2 is equal to 2r, so r then is actually equal to negative, um, pi minus 2 over 2, and so s is going to be negative r, and so s is equal to pi uh, plus 2 over 2, okay? And then knowing that now, I just need to plug in either r or s into my equation. Now let's, plus, let's, pl let's plot s in. So now um, plotting s back into here, above here, right, this is where we're going to put s, and then so now I get the point of intersection is pi plus 2 over 2 plus pi over 2 minus 1 comma pi plus 2 over 2 plus 1 right and what is that that's going to be equal to um, 2 pi plus 2 over 2 minus 1 which is actually just pi all right, and then comma, um, the other guy on the right-hand side becomes essentially pi over 2 plus 2. Okay, and then uh, so I get pi comma pi over 2 plus 2 is going to be the result of where the two lines intersect. Okay, so again, some good stuff um, here, the 13 one part is identifying uh, how to take this derivative right here finding r prime of t and knowing that r prime of t then uh, gives me uh, a formula for the tangent point at any time t and then r prime at pi over 2 is this first purple guy right here all right and then r um, and then r prime at 3 pi over 2 is going to be this second purple guy at 3 pi over 2 and then from there, we constructed the line equations because this gave us vectors. So we needed to evaluate the point at which those guys were starting at, um, these tangent vectors were starting at. And so then we were able to link them up because uh, here's, here's my position at 3 pi over 2, 
and then here's my direction at three pi over two. That's essentially what's going on. And then here is my position at pi over two. Here's my direction at pi over two. And then we can form two lines, and then we want to see where the lines intersect. And from there, it's just uh, some algebra getting us to our final answer. Okay, so this is what 13.1 is like. Um, big takeaway from 13.1 is to realize that the tangent vector is just the derivative of the position vector. Um, of course, there's other things I'm not going to talk about that are theoretical, like, uh, like speed, which is the magnitude of velocity, and then uh, acceleration, which is then the second derivative of position, or the derivative of the velocity vector. And those, I'm assuming you guys are going to talk in class. I'm not going to cover it deeply here. And so we're going to move on now to projectile motion in the next video. And I think there's going to be two videos on projectile motion. I'm not really sure. Um, it's a lot of formulaic plug and chug, and we'll see how it goes uh, in the next videos.